Okay, so we're on to example three now. And it looks like in example three, we're, we're re, uh, repeated rolling of a pair of dice. And a pair of dice means we're going to get a sum. If we repeat it, repeatedly roll a pair of dice, what is the probability that the first roll of doubles, not just any roll of doubles, the first roll of doubles occurs on the third roll? Well, that means that on the first roll, we couldn't have got doubles. On the second roll, we couldn't have got doubles. We only got doubles on the third roll. So we are waiting for doubles to happen. Okay? Uh, what is it that we're waiting to happen? Well, success to us is rolling doubles. And doubles, what's the probability of doubles using our sum chart? There's a 6 in 36 chance of that happening. Failure must be then 30 in 36. It's the other 30 outcomes that are not doubles. X is equal to, well, if this happened on the third roll, how many times did we have to wait until doubles occurred? We had to wait twice. So X equals 2. And the probability that X equals 2 is Q to the 2 times P which is 30 in 36 to the 2 times 6 in 36. And you can reduce those fractions if you like. It's up to you. Here we have 30 in 36 squared times 6 in 36. That's about an 11.57% chance of that happening of having to wait twice before doubles occurred for the first time. Okay, part B. What is the expected waiting time or the expected number of rolls before you roll doubles? Well, we know the expected value for a geometric is Q divided by P. And Q divided by P here would be 30 and 36 divided by 6 and 36, or 30 divided by 6, or 5. Therefore, on average, whoops, the expected number of rolls before doubles is 5, on average. That means we'd have to roll five times in a row, and then we'd probably see our first doubles on the sixth roll, on average. Okay. Let's go on to example four next. In example four it says, again, rolling a pair of dice, what is the probability that the first roll of doubles, double sixes, occurs? not doubles, double sixes occurs on the fourth roll. Well, if it happens on the fourth roll, how many times do we have to wait for this double six to occur? Three times. You guessed, you guessed it. So the probability of x equals three, that's our waiting time, is equal to the probability of failure. Well, if I roll a double six, that's a one in 36 chance. There must be a 35 in 36 chance that I don't roll a double six. And how many times did I have to fail? Did I see this failure occur? If it happened on the fourth roll, I failed three times. That's equivalent to this, or it matches this, I mean, times a one in 36 chance of rolling a double six, and that happens on the fourth roll. I'm not going to solve that. You guys can figure that out. You've seen the method. Let's do the second uh, part B. What is the chance of the probability that the first roll of double sixes occurs on the seventh roll now? The probability of x equals 7 is equal to 35 in 36 raised to the 7. Oh, wait a minute. It's not 7. It happened on the seventh roll. Oh, so this must equal 6. We must have had to wait 6 times. Ah, common mistake. I caught it. I hope you guys caught it too. So the probability that it happened on the seventh roll means we waited six times. Failure raised to the six. 
multiplied by 1 in 36 equals, and you can figure that out. Next example, number 5. Find the geometric distribution for x equals 0, 1, 2, 3, where p is equal to 0. 0.4. x is waiting time. So if the waiting time is 0 and p is 0. 0.4, then the probability of waiting 0 trials is q, 0. 0.6, raised to the 0, good, times 0. 0.4. What about waiting through one trial? Well, if you waited through one trial, that means that you must have failed once, and then you got success. So 0. 0.6 to the 1 times 0. 0.4. If you had to wait twice, well, then you must have failed twice before you got success on the third try. And 3, waiting time of 3, means you must have failed three times before you finally got success on the fourth try. Correct. I am not going to go through XPX with you because I normally use a spreadsheet and I can't do that with you right now. Uh, but one thing I do want to recommend or understand, have you understand, is that if I was to try this method XPX to find the expected value, I cannot just add these four up and figure out what the expected value is. It is not just these four because when we're talking about waiting time, we're not talking about a fixed number here. Basically, this could go on forever. We could wait forever for this success to happen. And so this waiting time uh, distribution goes on to infinity, technically. And if you add up all of those XPXs all the way to infinity, that will give you the actual answer here. But we're not going to do it, uh, seeing as how we don't have a spreadsheet in front of us. Okay, example number six and seven I'll cover in the last video, um, and it'll be a fairly short one then, okay?